What type of overalls does Mario wear? Denim, denim, denim. Today I'm doing my December wrap up and my January TBR. I don't want to have to have a huge intro, so let's get into it. I read four books this month and a novella and a novella. A novella. I have some lingering book slumpishness going on, but I'm not sure if I'm just slumpy or if a part of me is like, wow, I would much rather be on Twitter right now than reading. So I'm probably going to have to get over that, maybe cut it down my time on the internet this year, which I'll talk about in a different video. So back to the main point of this video, let's get into what I read in December. First book that I finished was the Harry po the Harry Potter Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, which is the third Harry Potter book. I don't think I need to talk. I don't think I need to talk very much about the synopsis of this, since I'm pretty sure most of us have read it. I really enjoyed this one. I don't know if it will be my favorite in the series, but I definitely enjoyed it. I absolutely adore Sirius Black. I'm hoping he doesn't have a downward spiral and a villain isn't is no spoiler. And then I ordered two books from Amazon because I knew that there was a book signing for these two books coming up and I wanted to finish them both. And one of those books was The Collector by Victoria Scott. I gave this book two out of five stars because it really wasn't that amazing. But this book is about a guy named Dante Walker who basically works for the devil in which he pretty much walks around earth and puts seals on people. And seals are basically just little marks on your soul that determine... If you do a bad act, you get a negative seal. If you have a good act, then one of the angelic walkers puts on a good angelic seal. And so whenever you're at the end of your life, whichever you have more of, bad or good, determines if you go to heaven or hell. So that's fun. And one day, um, they call him Juan. They have this really corny nickname for the devil. What is it? The boss man. Yeah. So one day, the boss man... It's like, yo, I need you to collect the soul of this girl. You have 10 days. Go have fun. But I need her soul. And so we don't know why. We don't, we don't even know the chick. So he goes to her house and it's basically um, a story that takes place in 10 days of him trying to get her soul. But he realizes that she's so innocent and he just wants to kind of get to know her first, I guess. Nevertheless, I thought it was kind of annoying because the narrator's perspective, hold on. The narrator Dante is very, um, he has a very unique voice and <laughs> takes a lot of getting used to. So let me just read you something in his perspective. What's up, people? Name's Dante. Last summer I met this chick in Chicago. Homegirl said she dug my red Chuck Taylors and I dug her fashion sense. This is already hurting, I'm putting it down. So yeah, it's like that for the majority of the book and it's just like really slang and he's such a jerk and that's probably why I didn't like this. But toward the end, he and the girl's relationship really, not really grew, but it became sort of purposeful and so it got so much better. But the book was really addicting to read all throughout so I couldn't give it like one star. If it was really bad the whole book, it would have been one star. But it got better. It got better. And then I read the lovely novella, Fracture Me, it's from the Shattery Zone. <laughs> Basically, I can't spoil the rest of the Shatter Me series telling you what Fracture Me is about or anything like that, but I will tell you this, I think Fracture Me sets it up so that you're supposed to hate Adam. I can't describe it any other way because I was so annoyed with him. And this is coming from someone who has loved Adam for like a year of my life. I don't know. And then after that, I just couldn't get into anything. All the books that I were reading were just so long and I wanted to finish something by the end of the month. But I was just feeling really slumpy and I didn't want to have to read anything. So one night I sat down and I was like, Whitney, you're going to read one thing and that one thing is going to be this book because it's short and it has huge font and you need to read it. And so I did and I really enjoyed this. At the time I was reading it, I just thought it was okay. But looking back on it, I actually, I might bump this up to five stars because I was so, oh, good book. Star Girl is about a girl named Star Girl. She has been homeschooled her whole life, but finally she's put into public school and she is very weird. She brings a ukulele to school and every single day 
she goes around and sings people happy birthday with it and she dresses really in different costumey outfits every day. She carries around her pet rat with her and basically everyone, as you can probably imagine, is very freaked out by her like, who's the new weird kid in our school? But then things kind of shift and she starts to kind of change the school. People get more interested in her and they like how lively she is and although they still avoid her because they think she's weird, things get a bit more peppy. Our main character, I think his name is Leo, becomes good friends with her. At first he was also very frightened of Stargirl, but then they develop a relationship and it is the cutest thing ever. I love the conflict in this. It was just so real. Still, I loved Stargirl and I loved her story. I love what she stood for. I loved her rat. Cinnamon is my idol. Highly recommend this book. It is extremely short. I got this one from a bookstore sell which sell out, which was like 50 cents. So you can find it really cheap. Highly recommend it. Then at the end of the month, I wanted to squeeze one more thing in before the month ended, and so I read Sweet Evil by Wendy Higgins, which is another author that's going to be at the signing I was just talking about. And this book is about a girl named Anna. Anna? Anna? I don't know. After seeing Frozen, I'm thinking Anna, but it's probably Anna. She has the power so that she could see people's auras, which is pretty much their emotions in colors. If she looks at people and if they're red, that means they're lustful. If she looks at them and they're yellow, that means they're happy, etc, etc. She thought she was just crazy, but actually she's Nephilim. Do you recognize that word from somewhere? Because I do. She meets the lovely, the lovely, I emphasize, the lovely, Kaiden, not Kaiden, Kaiden, who is British accented. Oh. He's a drummer in a band and she first meets him and surprise, surprise, he's a jerk. But then she realizes that they have the same power, he's also Nephilim, and they just go on this huge journey into finding out who she is and everything like that. Because she's, she's pretty special in a way that you're gonna have to read the book to find out why. That was probably the crappiest synopsis I've ever done in my life. I really like this book because the whole deal is that they're Nephilim because they're half demon, but the demons aren't like City of Bones demons where it's like, and they just stand for evil. But these demons actually stand for the seven deadly sins plus some of the Ten Commandments. So there's like sloth, greed, and envy. And I believe Anna's dad is the dad about um, substance abuse. And so it's her dad is just the demon that influences people to want to do drugs. And Kaiden's dad is the father or the demon of lust. So as you can imagine, Kaiden has tendencies and urgencies to sway the- oh my god. We're not gonna talk about it, but I did like this book because it was really interesting that it had a very human quality to it, even though it was about demons and I keep saying the word demons a lot. I gave this three stars, I'm not sure if I said that already. I will pick up the sequel because I think it's gonna turn out great. And now it's time for the January TBR. I'm giving myself a very ambitious TBR, which is kind of frightening. But also, I've been really adamant about trying to read more this month. I finally accepted the 100 book challenge, and this I think will be a great start because, whew, out of breath. In January, I am attending a book event that is held in my town, so I can't tell you the name of the event, otherwise you would know where I live, and that's very frightening. There will be like 20 authors going to this thing, so as you can imagine, I'm trying to do a little bit of research, get myself into some books, and hopefully read a ton of them before we get to the actual event, which is January 25th. Just a couple of people that are going to be there is Andrew Smith, Cody Keplinger, Neil Schusterman, and um, Julie Kagawal. There's a ton of people. I haven't heard of like 15 of them, so I did a little research, got a couple of their novels, and now I'm going to show them to you and hopefully finish all of them, which is a very ambitious goal. I highly doubt I will, but hey, optimism. The first book that I plan to read, which is what I was just talking about, and this is Andrew Smith's Winger. So uh, I have a friend, Book Hunter 155. Manuel is my buddy, and he absolutely loves this book. He has been yelling at me to read this book for forever. So hey, are you happy, Manuel? Are you happy? Can we be real though? I like the back cover a lot more than I like the front. Cool. Not so much. Cool. Not so much. I'm gonna skip synopses on this just for time limit reasons. 
Next book that I'm reading to get signed is The Madman's Daughter by Megan Shepard. I've seen a couple of people haul this and I haven't really heard much about it, but if I've heard of it, that means that I will probably like it. That was the stupidest reasoning I've ever heard. Is her name Juliet? It's gonna be a good book. It's not spelled the right way though. Do you like Shakespeare? All I know is that he stole my name and spelled it wrong. <laughs> Warnet, I love you. These next two books are from the same author that I'm very excited to meet. This is Unremembered by Jessica Brody and then 52 Reasons to Hate My Father by Jessica Brody. And this one looks totally chick flick and I understand but um, let's talk about this one first. This is the one that I've seen most often. This has been on Amazon Bargain for the longest time so I wouldn't be surprised if people had this on their shelves. And honestly, not sure what it's about, but I've heard a ton about it and I really think I'll enjoy this. This is going to be one of the more prioritized reads. And this one I wasn't going to buy, but then I read the synopsis and I was just totally sucked in. This is about a really spoiled girl who basically has everything she wants and doesn't need to work or anything. But then her father says if she wants her trust fund, then she's going to have to work for it. And so she gets a couple, she gets all these jobs and she's working with this guy and I think it's going to be hilarious. I cannot wait to read this. The next book is one I have not heard of, but as I was looking up the author, I saw that it had ton of a ton of reviews and so I figured I might as well try even if I don't finish it this month. It is The Farm by Emily McKay and this is what it looks like. I got this off of Book Outlet and so this was pretty cheap. Same with Unremembered. I got a couple of these off Book Outlet. This book is about like post-apocalyptic apocalypse. What, what did I just say? Again, it's just one of those inside world, outside world, they escape type things. I think it's going to be pretty interesting, maybe? The next book is, or the next two books are from an author that you probably heard me say earlier and was like, oh, I like him. It is Neil Shusterman's books and the only two that I'm bringing to get signed are Unwind and Bruiser. I am currently reading Unwind. I am about... 97 pages into it. I've marked a couple of things that I like. I feel like this book is just gonna be kind of meh for me, but I do like the topic and that's pretty neato. That's one of the ones that I definitely want to finish to get signed. And the other book is Bruiser. I've had this since the summertime, so I'm glad I'm finally gonna be able to read this. The next book is Shut Out by Cody Keplinger. I've already read The Death by Cody Keplinger and I wasn't the hugest fan of it. I know it's pretty much everyone's favorite book, but I really didn't enjoy it that much, so I'm hoping maybe this one will do it for me. And then the last two books I have are Julie Kagawa books. I have The Iron King and then, of course, The Immortal Rules. I haven't read, well, obviously, neither of these, but I hear great things about these books. This one was just recommended to me last night, so I'm excited that someone has faith in this book. And this sounds so interesting. I have not read a vampire novel in forever and I cannot wait to get into it. So yeah, as you can tell, I got my work cut out for me this month with like, how many books is this? 10 books? I think I counted wrong, but that's a lot of things for me to accomplish in one month. And with that said, I think we're done here. So thank you for watching. Mm, I'm so stressed out. I'm not gonna be able to finish all of these probably. So you should totally let me know if you've read any of these and which ones I should read first. <laughs> and, <laughs> I'm still laughing about that pine at the beginning. Denim, denim, denim. I will see you next time, everybody. Goodbye.